Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm going to be working on another antenna, I think. Um, a while back, uh, another ham, a friend of mine, Jim, AC9EZ, hi Jim, uh, back in Fort Wayne, he did an, ex an experimental antenna he told me about. Uh, he was building his own dipoles, he's a new ham, and uh, he had built one for 80 meters, and uh, he I think he cut it for the low end of the band because he likes CW a lot uh, and used an antenna tuner for the high end, but he had an idea, and it's a real simple idea, and I'm sure somebody else has done this in the past, but I haven't seen it anywhere, and it works. Um, he cut two antenna antennas. He cut one for the lower portion of the band, which is around 3.5 megahertz, you know, and he cut another one for the voice portion of the band up closer to 4 megahertz. Uh, but then he combined them to the same feed point, like a fan dipole. Now, a fan dipole is a, is a dipole with a single center feed point and several lengths of legs getting shorter as you go down. Uh, so you might cut one length for 80 meters, you might cut another for 40, you might cut another for 10 meters. And you share the feed point with them. And they call it a fan dipole because if you flip it over, it kind of looks a little like one of those paper fans that you might... Uh, see people using to cool themselves off in hot weather. Uh, so usually fan dipoles are for multiple bands. But what he did is he created a single band fan dipole where one leg uh, covered the lower portion of the band, the other leg covered the upper portion of the band, and he said it worked pretty well. He had relatively low SWR across the entire band from 3.5 megahertz to 4 megahertz. Uh, and uh, wow, that's a great idea. Now, it would be good for a permanent antenna because, you know, you, you're going to have a little extra work hanging it uh, and, and uh, you know, supporting those other legs. Not very good for a portable antenna. But what if you wanted a good portable dipole for 80 meters that would cover pretty much the whole band uh, with low SWR? So what I thought for portable, you'd want it to be pretty easy to put up. You'd really only want to have to have one anchor point for the legs, you know, and maybe a support for the center. Um, and the solution I'm thinking of is using window line. This stuff is, you know, basically two conductors that are, that are rigidly separated every so many inches, you know, by plastic material. So you get a real nice uniform separation uh, of this feed line. Um, I've used it to make a folded dipole quite successfully for 40 meters. And I thought, well, why not make a 80, 80, 75 meter fan dipole out of this stuff. It should be pretty easy. I mean, you could just cut the one leg shorter than the top leg, you know, and have the top leg uh, cut for 3.63 megahertz or so. Um, and then the uh, bottom leg cut for, uh, oh, 3.8 or uh, somewhere around there. Um, I'd have to figure out, you know, what's a third of the way in from each band edge, and that would be probably a good center point to cut each leg. Uh, and then you'd have a single piece of material, so you'd have one anchor point at the end. Uh, it'd be easy to roll up, you know, to take back, you know, put back in your backpack or whatever. Um, fairly easy to put up, you know, relatively easy to put up. So that's the plan. I'm going to make a fan dipole for 75 slash 80 meters using window line for the element. Now there's two ways you could feed it. Um, the more efficient way to feed it would be to use window line for the feed line. And then down at the uh, radio have a, a either a four to one or a nine to one ballon, depending upon the impedance at that point. You know, if, um, if the impedance at that point is 450 ohms or around there, then you'd need a nine to one. If it's around 200 ohms, then you'd need a four to one. Uh, so that would be a, a more efficient way to feed it. And the reason for that is, when you use a balanced feed line, like ladder line, uh, it's, there's, there's almost no losses. Even with a high SWR on the feed line, there's still almost no losses. It, it, it's not like coax, where it'll eat that power. Uh, so that would be a, or an efficient way to feed it. The other way to feed it would be just with coax right up to the feed point. Maybe a one-to-one uh, -one common mode choke um, there just to cut down on the RF coming back down the coax. Uh, that would be the simpler way to do it, I think. And I think that's the way I'm going to do this experimental antenna. 
is I'm going to use a one-to-one -one common mode choke at the uh, center point and feed it with coax. Now there'll be a slight impedance uh, mismatch there because a dipole at the center is around 74 ohms um, impedance uh, and we'll be using 50 ohm coax. So the lowest SWR at the middle will probably be somewhere around 1.15 to 1 or so or maybe a little higher. Uh, you you wouldn't get it down to one to one. It might even be 1.5 to one at the at the, at the lowest point. Uh, but uh, you know it'll be good for the experiment. Now what what I expect might happen is you know you're going to have that that curve that SWR curve that dips down right, and you're you're going to have two of those that are going to be slightly separated and they're going to come down and then come back up towards the middle of the band. But I expect that across that center portion of the band since you'll be sort of sharing the load um, between the two elements, you know, they're, they're going to be sort of, there's going to be like a Venn diagram where they cross over at that point, and they'll, they'll act like a wider, a wider single conductor, I think. So what I expect might happen on that curve is it might come down, come back up slightly and sort of flatten out across the middle of the band, then dip and then come back up at the other end. It's kind of what I expect. Uh, we'll find out, of course. But if this works um, as well as I expect it to work, what you would end up with is you would end up with a fairly easy to install 75 to 80 meter dipole that will give you um, tunerless operation across the entire band uh, with, a, with a fairly low SWR. It, it should be a, a pretty fantastic antenna for 75 and 80 meters. Now, I'm at an RV park which makes it very tough for me um, to put up antennas. I'm near Al's tower. I might be able to pull the center up on the tower and just have to find places to put the legs, um, to bring the legs out to. But that's down the road. The first thing I need to do is order the uh, window line. Um, each side is gonna have to be around 65 feet or so to give us a full half wave um, at the low end of the band. So uh, I'm going to have to shop around and find some window line. Uh, MFJ sells them in 50-foot lengths, which is not long enough. Um, I think there's 100-foot rolls, which then would fall short of the full 126 or so feet that you need. Um, so i got to shop around and find some window line. I'm going to 3D print a center structure for it since it's just an experimental antenna. I don't mind using PLA plastic for the center. It's not going to be up for years. It's going to be up for a couple of months before I uh, head back out west. Uh, so that's uh, that's the next step. I'm going to order the window line, I'm going to 3D print the center structure, and I'm going to build and test the antenna. And that'll be uh, in the follow-up video to this one. This is just about the design. If any of you want to try this idea, though, in the interim, before I get my materials and get my antenna up, uh, please, you know, do so and comment below on what you see as far as performance. I think it's a great idea. Uh, a single band fan dipole to cover the full range from 3.5 to 4 megahertz with a low SWR. I can't think of any reason why it won't work. So stay tuned for the uh, the next video on this antenna, probably two or three videos down the, down the road from this one, uh, and uh, we'll be doing some testing of the antenna as we get it built and put up on the air. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.